Hi, this is Frederick from Detroit Berlin, a channel about music gear, modular synthesizers and music production in general. I'm setting up a mastering chain, an analog mastering chain. I made previous videos and in this video I'm going to have a deeper look into the Tegeler Audio Vary Tube Compressor. It's a tube compressor with two tubes at the input for the left and right channel and two tubes for the output, so four tubes in total. And it's a pretty simple unit. I have it here. Tegler makes quite affordable but really high-end quality products. This is, in my opinion, an amazing compressor. It can color the sound a bit, it really can add smoothness and yeah, a nice touch to a mix bus or a drum bus or a vocal. You can use it in many ways. It's a stereo unit, both sides can be linked or you can use them separately. Let's go over the controls. Here we have the input and the output for the left channel and for the right channel. They're mirrored. We have the attack and the release. The attack and the release for the right channel. They can be linked so that if you move the attack or the release of the left channel, the right channel actually follows. It will not physically move, but it will be the same on the left as on the right. Not with the in and the outputs though, you can't link them. Then we got the switches, the color and compression switch, which when it's in downward position, it will use the compressions. The unit will compress, it's a compressor, it will compress. But if you move the switch in the high position, then it won't compress, but it will send the audio through its circuit and then you get this nice touch. Then we got the in and the bypass switch. When it's in bypass mode, the unit is totally bypass. When it is in, then it's in the chain, then it's on. Then you got the side chain locut input. It can be in full, it can be 120 hertz, or it can be at 60 hertz. And it actually means that when you got a lot of low end, let's say you put it in 60 hertz and you have a spike in 30 hertz low end, that spike will not make the compressor compress everything. So for a, a smoother sound and better reaction, you can put it in like 60 hertz, 120, or you can put it in full mode if you want to grab that low end and compress that low end. This unit, it doesn't have any side chain inputs, but you can use the side chain low cut. And then you got the VU meters, analog metering. I think it's a pretty unit and it's not only pretty, but it is adding such a nice touch to the music can really bring life to something. I mainly use it on my master bus, but you can use it on vocals, on instruments uh, like synthesizers or on the drum bus, etc. So it's a unit that has multiple purposes. It is a mastering compressor, which means that the knobs, they're indented. So they click and you have steps. So that is easier to recall if you're mastering and you need to write down at which number you set the knob, then it's easier to have them indented. So that's really useful for mastering purposes. You can also use it for like I mentioned, instruments and vocals, etc. So let's play a little bit with the very tube compressor from Tegler Audio. I have a drum loop prepared. Let's play. Let's bypass. Now it's 
really smashing because the attack is down. A little bit more release to make it a bit smoother. No compression. It's ducking a little bit too much. So let's What's really interesting to know is you don't have a threshold control but the more you drive the inputs the more it will compress. It's pretty logical but it's yeah it's like some other compressors work this way. The more you drive the input the more it will compress. So if you move the input down and you move the output up then you compress the sound less than if you put the input all the way up and the output all the way down. So let's continue. So you feel it moving. feels really lively I would say. Simple controls and you quickly go to a better sound in my opinion. So that's on the drum. Let's compare compression versus color mode. So I changed the settings for less compression. Still compresses but now let's compare compression, gentle compression versus color mode where it only colors the sound and also compare that with the bypass. Okay, so let's put it on color mode. difference is pretty subtle. And this is bypass, it sounds, I would say, more dull. It adds something magical to the sound, I would say.
I think it's wonderful. Now let's try to yeah, use it on vocals and therefore I have this microphone. Now I switch the sound to this microphone and yeah now it's compressing and it can compress quite a bit. Let's put it on full and yeah I think it's a pretty okay compressor for vocals. I don't think it's pretty okay. I think it's actually really good. So this is without compression and this is with compression. You can really smash it and maybe use some more input gain. Let's compare it. Da 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 I'm not a great singer. I do have a project where I sing, but it's with some effects on my vocals. You can always check that out if you want. It's called Dark Vault and it's more like industrial EBM music. So please check it out. And yeah, I think this is a pretty nice unit to use with vocals too. I'm not really great at doing compression on vocals and stuff like this, especially when I hear myself talking. When I'm talking, it's really difficult to adjust the levels, etc. It's way nicer when you have someone sing who can sing and then on the fly use that compression. So I think Wow! 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 It compresses, in my opinion, nicely. I think it's an amazing unit on vocals too. It's also really great if you want to run a synthesizer through it. I have a digital synthesizer, digital oscillators. It's a Pro 2 from Dave Smith Instruments. Let's run a sequence and see how the Varitube compressor sounds. This is sounding pretty flat, now it's in bypass. Now it's compressing. It brings the sequence to life, I would say. Let's try color mode, will probably be too loud. Without, with,
So really, really nice addition to the sound, I think. I would also like to talk a little bit about, in my opinion, the pros and the cons of this unit. So it is affordable in a sense that a lot of mastering gear is extremely expensive and this is way more accessible. It's a really nice tool. It's a solid unit. It is really well built and yeah, there is also yeah, a cost. But I would say that the price is a really big pro because it is still pretty affordable. Then the build, the build quality is very sturdy, very good. I watched videos of people opening the unit and I know how it looks inside. I'm not going to do that because there's already videos with people doing that. But it's really precisely built, it is designed well and it also translates to the sound. It sounds like it is built, it sounds massive, it sounds really high quality. Then the ease of use. Many compressors, they're pretty straightforward. Also with this one, it is extremely straightforward. You got the link switch for using them as a stereo bus or instrument compressor, input output. I went over the controls in the beginning of this video. It's really straightforward. Anybody can understand it. If you know the basic knowledge of how a compressor works, and I will probably do a video on that, then yeah, you just know it is super straightforward and yeah, it's really easy to use. And what I also really like with this unit are the indented knobs, which makes it's suitable for mastering. Now I also have a few cons and some of them are a little bit related. Their personal preference. I mentioned that it has indented knobs. I wouldn't mind if the resolution of the indentations, so you have various steps, I wouldn't mind if that amount of steps would be a little bit less. If you want to go to 5, that it's on 5 and not 5.1. It is not really resistant, so clicking it, if you're really gentle with your hands, then yeah, it's okay. If you're working a little bit quicker, sometimes you don't know if it really clicks uh, 5 steps and you don't know if it was 5, 4 or 6. If you're right in front of the unit, then you can watch the labels pretty nicely and that's easier than when you're like sideways using the device because I can't see these numbers when I'm in this position. I can't see the numbers at the other side of the knob. So if I put it in that position, I need to gamble or I need to lift myself up, look from above and then double check if it's the same left and right. You got to switch to link the attack and the release and a few other controls. You got a switch to link that. It would be also nice to have like a switch to link the in and the output volumes. I think that might be really nice if you're using it in stereo and you don't want to change something on the left and the right channel volume wise. Then really small thing but you got the bypass, the in and the bypass switch. They're just too far away. My hands are a little bit too small to be able to control it, the bypass with one hand. That would be really nice if I'm in the center of my speakers and I want to switch it on or bypass it. That's really difficult. I'm lucky I use the big six so I can just bypass it on the big six. Then I bypass everything. So if I just want to bypass 
the very tube compressor then I would prefer that they're closer together so that you can do it with one movement you can do it with these controls no problem and I think that is really nice that you just can switch it with one hand instead of using two hands and needing to move out of the center. If the unit is in front of you that's no problem because you can do it with two hands. If it's on the side left or right then it would be useful if you can do that with one hand. It's nitpicking but still I think it's worth mentioning and yeah it looks pretty because it's nicely designed but if you can do it with one hand for me that would be a plus because it's out of center. I would like that. And there's also no sidechain input. Don't know if it's possible or not, but there's no sidechain input so you can't send a signal in to have it yeah, sidechain the compressor. It only detects it from the incoming audio so you don't have an extra sidechain input. Those are really minor cons. I think the pros outweighed the cons. I highly advise this unit. I have a link in the description, an affiliate link. And if you follow that link, you buy a device, you support the channel. That is really appreciated. And I also put all the links to all my gear also down in the description. So you can see what I work with. And if you're interested, just follow those affiliate links, click them and yeah, if you buy something the channel gets a little percentage. So the reason I bought this is to have it in my analog mastering chain, which consists of the big six. It has an insert point and the audio is coming to my big six from my RME ADI2 Pro which is a really nice converter, did an episode on that already. Then I'm inserting the SSL Fusion, has also an insert and it is mid-side insert. I've got the Bus Plus from SSL and also from Tegler Audio Manufacturer, the EQP1 on which I have a separate video. So please do check that out, it's also an amazing unit. And after the SSL Fusion with those two units inserted, I have the last in chain, the Tegler Varitube Compressor. And I use that to add just that little sparkle at the end of the chain, compress a little bit if I need to compress, make it sound like a finished record. I do mastering. I'm also available for hire when you follow the link in the description. And I specialize in electronic music and electro-industrial, industrial rock, that kind of music. So if you have a project that you need mastered, please hire me on Sound Better. I also hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and hope to see you next time. Bye bye!